A rake and a tether have two different purposes. Usually a tether is used after the hay cutting. It's the second process in the hay making operation. The tether is used to, down here in the southeast, we call it fluff. Used to fluff the hay up and essentially turn it over so that the bottom damp side of the cut crop then gets exposed to the sun, all to promote faster drydown time. Getting that rapid drydown is extremely important. So our choice in equipment that we use for mowing the crop, tedding the crop, and then ultimately raking the crop can make a big difference in our drydown rate. If we have a conditioner, we are gonna add about 20% to our drying rate. If we have just a tedder, we're gonna add about 20% to our drying rate. But when we add those two together, we get a benefit of both and then some. We get 50 to 60% extra drying rate. So it's really important to look at the choices that we have available to us to get that dry down rate as fast as possible to avoid weather related risks. There are several different types of rakes that we see here in the Southeast. Your wheel rake, which is the most common, usually in the eight or 10 basket configuration. Your parallel bar rake, this is a, a rake that has bars parallel to the ground that travel in a circular motion. And the rotary rake that you see behind me. Your parallel bar rake and your rotary rake uh, promote the highest quality hay because they don't actually make contact with the ground like a wheel rake does. This reduces the chances of any ash or foreign debris getting inside of your windrow ultimately achieving the highest quality hay possible. The older style parallel bar rake was really good at being very careful with the crop and not knocking off a lot of leaves. But the challenge with it is it's very slow to operate in the field. More recently, we see a lot of use of wheel rakes. Those can really fly across the field. We can make a lot of windrows very quickly with that. But the challenge is we knock a lot of leaves off. Now we have these rotary rakes that can gently move that hay over into a windrow without knocking off leaves, but also at a very fast rate across the field. A rotary rake makes a more natural windrow. And what I mean by that is when the tines pick up the crop and move it over, it's, it's more natural to how that crop was laying on the ground. With a wheel style rake, when you come through, the wheels are turning. It promotes sort of a roping action of the hay as it merges. Sometimes that hay will get intertangled and twisted together, and during the baling process, sometimes it likes to suck more of that tangled windrow into the baler than what's necessary. Ideally, we don't want that windrow to be wider than about two and a half to three feet, or taller than about three feet. Otherwise, we may be taking in too much to that baler at one time. We need to really adjust the rake so that we are pulling in just enough to create that size of a windrow rather than anything much bigger than that. The raking and tedding operations have an influence on the relative forage quality that we would get because every time we touch that crop, we have the potential for knocking off leaves. And the more leaf material we have, the higher the quality is going to be. So if we're tedding at a time when the top of that crop is relatively dry, we may be shattering leaves and leaf material may be flying around behind us as we go through the field. So we need to time our tedding appropriately. We need to rake with just a little bit of moisture in it so that it'll cure out the rest of the way in the windrow so that we can keep those leaves on the forage rather than leaving them in the field. There are a couple of things to avoid in the field when using a raker and tedder. Most importantly is making sure that you minimize ground contact as much as possible. The more the tool contacts the ground, the more ash and dirt and debris it stirs and can end up inside of your windrow. Now with some rakes, such as a wheel rake, this is impossible to avoid since the rake is driven by the ground. With a rotary style rake, such as the one behind me, the rake never makes contact with the ground, so it avoids any ash content ending up in your windrow. You're looking for about one to one and a half inches of, of height from the ground uh, to the tines to, to minimize as much contact as possible. Some of the common mistakes that we will make in the raking step here is that we would maybe operate at too fast of a ground speed. 
If you travel too fast with a rotary rake, or a tether for that matter, you could cause damage to the machine. We may be leaving some material in the field that way, so it's really important for us to not try to dig down into the soil at all, just skirt across the top of it to move that hay over into the windrow. Overall, the key here is to make the right choice for the equipment that we're using to ted that crop and to rake the crop, to make sure that we keep enough leaf on that material. And it's also important to understand the time of when that occurs relative to the moisture in the crop and making sure that we are keeping as much leaf on that material as possible so that when it goes into the bale, we have as much high quality forage there as we possibly can get.